Hello, my name is Debbie. I'm the Allen Gator Stitcher. Welcome to Floss Tube number three. Today is Wednesday, February 10th, 2021. Thank you for everyone who has watched my previous two videos. I hope that you enjoyed them. And I welcome everyone who watches this video and enjoys it to leave a comment and hit the subscribe button. Um, I've really enjoyed uh, sharing my stitching with all of you and getting all the commentary on it. And a number of you have already sent me great ideas to enable me about patterns I should be doing in the future. So before I get started showing my stitching, I did have one question regarding how do I store my floss? So when I was a monogamous stitcher, I did bobbinate. I would have a master set of all the DMC that was in a plastic container. I think a number of you have seen those containers and just stored it all in there. And then when I would have a project, I would uh, get a floss ring, put all the DMC on there, or maybe two floss rings if it was a large project. And that's how I would stitch that time I didn't have any fancy floss and I was really only using DMC and not any other brand so it was relatively easy and given that I was working mostly on full coverage DMC uh, was the way to go um, but when I decided when I finished my last big project that I wanted to focus more on a number of projects and I didn't want to have to have all my I didn't want to have to keep bobbinating all my floss because I bobbinating so much floss for so many different projects I felt would take away from my stitching time and that's not what I wanted to do. Um, so what I have done instead, I bought a number of these containers from Amazon. I also will use a shoe box if I have a, a, a one that's sitting around. And what I do is I have bought the little snack size bags. So this size, um, doesn't really matter what the brand is. I've got multiple colors. The colors don't mean anything to me. It's the size because it fits perfectly a three by five index card and I can write the number. So this is 310 for our project. I write the number on there, slip in the floss uh, in the bag. This particular project called for two skeins of 310. So I just slip it in and that's what I use. This is how I, this is how I store for all my full coverage product, projects plus some of my other projects that do have a lot of floss. For the smaller projects, I still put them in the bag baggies that way but i just keep them in the project bag and that way i can just pick up the bag and be ready to stitch i don't need to uh, then dig through my piles of boxes and find the correct floss so i hope that answers your question and feel free if you have any other questions um, to leave them below but with that i will go ahead and start showing you my stitching so when i did my video last time it was, I believe, the day that uh, Jesse Marie pulled the WhipGo numbers, but I didn't know the numbers um, at the time. So I, once she called the numbers, I held on till February 1st, and then I went ahead and started with um, one of the first ones that, the first one that she pulled. So uh, one of my goals was to finish a block on a year at Hawk Run Hollow. I didn't know when this was going to be called, so I, um, you know, it was it finished whatever block I was working on. I was still in January, so. Uh, she uh, gave me the incentive to uh, finish finish the first January block. So here it is. There's the January block. And I, I decided to go down and start on the April block rather than going to the right and focusing on the February block. So in the first block, you can see it's a, a reference to Auld Lang Sign. They're both toasting the new year, one with beer, one with a little champagne glass. Um, really cute block. So the April block that focuses on April showers. I also was able to, I had probably at least two thirds of this upper block done. So that was a relatively easy whip go goal for me. Again, I could have been at this point uh, in whip go and had to, and had to uh, finish this whole block if I wanted to meet my whip go goal. The way I'm doing whip go is I am trying to finish the goals in the month that they are called. Um, that's my personal challenge. I know a lot of people have WIPGO goals that they're like, as long as I accomplish this during the year, that's their goal. This is my own personal challenge, the way I'm doing it. Um, I also had incentive to work on this a little bit more. I joined Magical Stitches and we had a couple of prompts. One of them was to stitch on something that would be connected to plumbing or would, um, or has a toilet. I don't have any whips that have actual pictures of toilets, but I do have, um, you know, there's a house in here and I think many people in the group are using the house to um, it has plumbing um, so that would seem to be a good connection um, we also had to stitch on something that you thought might be fun to do at camp because this year in magical stitches we are at a camp 
And so uh, I said, I thought going sailing was really fun. So I was able to combine my WIPCO Magical Stitches goals and work on this project a little bit more. So this is on a, I'm just going back to this again. Um, this is 36 count, picture this plus uh, in the color um, Heartland. Um, so I'm really loving this. I am doing two over one. I went back and forth about should I do uh, uh, sorry, it's two over two. I went back and forth whether I should do two over one, two over two, or one over two. And I made the decision to go two over two. I liked the coverage better. I do a lot of my full coverage on 18 count. I do that two over, I, I use two strands of threads there. So I know some people feel that this can get too thick, um, but that I didn't have that experience working on it. And I like the coverage better. When I get to this block down here, which the whole, this December block is 100% full coverage, I might be regretting that decision. Um, but right now, I'm, I'm really liking the way it's come out. Um, her dress there. I mean, obviously, all of this is full coverage in here, and it doesn't seem too thick to me. So I'm enjoying it. Um, and I'm enjoying doing the two over one. I'm glad I made that decision. Another project that I worked on was from the Blue Flower um, Huckleberry Farm. Um, I think many of you have seen this. I think I showed it in my last video as well. So I just made a little bit more progress. Um, I got a little bit more of the mountain done here, extended the vines and some of these berries and extended it down that way. Um, so this, again, I have used for a number of prompts um, in Magical Stitches. We had to stitch on a, a, something that had both animals and people, and this, um, this pattern does. So down here, there's a woman, lots of animals all over the picture. Um, so that was a, a good opportunity for me to pull that out. Um, also, I, um, I'm using this for the official No New Starts 2021 group because it is still, um, we're still in the sign of Aquarius and the amethyst is the stone. And so I'm using uh, 32 count picture this plus, two over one and uh, in the color whimsy, which is a, a nice purple color. Um, more lilac than purple, but I'm sure there's some pale amethysts around there. So I'm, I'm using um, that as well. And I've really enjoyed stitching on that. Um, the next piece, which I haven't made too much progress on, um, this is Cats in the Toy Box um, by, uh, it's a Hay design, um, artwork by Leslie and Ivory. Um, so I'm still, you'll see, you can see I'm sort of still up in here. I've done the monkey, um, or at least the top half of the monkey head. Um, so here's where I am now. So I have a number of, of confetti stitches that I still need to do in his face. Um, and then when I pick up those stitches, then I'll pull down and do it. So it's starting to expand over into the next page and the page below. Um, but these are literally like either one or two stitches in his face or over here. This is, I think, a stuffed, an animal, like a stuffed uh, seahorse or something. It'll be like one or two colors there, and then I'm just pulling them through and doing it. So it's a little bit slow going right now, um, but I am using this for Full Coverage Fanatics. It's my focus piece for the year. And so if I want to get my 21,000 stitches for the year, I need to have um, I need to have 1,750 stitches each month. While in January I did over 3,000, so I'm certainly on track. I have put in only a few hundred stitches this month. So in the evenings, this is, tends to be what I focus on, at least until I sort of can get over the slower parts. I had a question um, in my first video um, when I showed this originally um, about this needle winder. Um, it's a Ziggy needle winder with a football and it says, how about them cats? So this is a needle minder that I made on my, made on my own to a certain extent. Um, when, I, um, when I was growing up, I thought the high school I would go to um, had Bobcats as their mascot. And this is the South, football's a big deal. So um, at the shopping mall, probably, I probably bought this pin there. They had it for all the different high school teams in Gainesville. Um, I ended up not going to the high school. We moved away. Um, but I had this pin. And um, and so when I, um, I had saved it, and I've saved all of my pins on a scrap piece of fabric that I have. And when I decided that, you know, I'm never going to wear these pins again, but I can pull off the pins on the back um, and make a needle minder. So that's what I did. I glued on some... Um, wear with magnets to it and I use it as my needle minder. So um, someone asked if it was possible to buy this, probably not, um, but nonetheless, um, it's worked out really great to serve as a needle minder and because this is cats in the toy box, it's how about them cats? And I thought it, it fit really well um, with the piece. Okay, so next piece that I worked on 
was uh, this is Mother of Dragons by Pain Free Crafts. Um, again, I think I mentioned this last time. This is a piece that I can use um, for a lot of the challenges. It's got a lot of block stitching. There is an occasional uh, occasional confetti piece in, in there, but for the most most part, it is relatively easy to stitch on, um, and it's also really sort of the only piece I have that has some sort of um, fantastical creature like a dragon. Um, so it's a good piece for me to use for my stitching. I also do love uh, Game of Thrones. I've read all five books um, and obviously I've watched the whole HBO series. Um, so this is where I am now. I think I just probably pulled down a little bit more and did this and did a little bit more work on, uh, this is actually what the dragon. You can see this is one dragon wing here. This is the top of another dragon wing here. Um, to be honest, it doesn't look like much to me right now. Um, this part of the pattern is up here. There's some detail about the stone building she's in. Obviously it's quite dark where she is and most of the light is coming from the fire from the dragon. I kind of feel like right now, I can't really see the detail coming out here. So I'm hoping that it will start to emerge more um, as I start to fill in some of the, the missing confetti stitches in there. I also feel like it's a good metaphor for the last season of Game of Thrones, especially for the last battle of Winterfell where, you know, a lot of people complain that it was so dark that you really couldn't see what was going on. Um, but nonetheless, I'm going to persevere in this because I do like the char character of uh, Daenerys, even if, spoiler alert, even if she turns out crazy in the end and does not end, end up with the, uh, the Iron Throne. But nonetheless, um, I think she's a strong woman character and she, along her quest, did a lot of good things like abolishing um, slavery and, and helping people to try and break the wheel. On this, I have a uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Again, my only piece of fantastical creatures it has nothing to do with vampires, but I just thought it would be appropriate here. And I do love the TV show Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And I got this needle minder from uh, Mad Reminders. And this is just an 18 count off white Ada, um, stitched uh, two over one. So uh, I am a member of the Carolyn Zook and uh, Robin's monthly magazine cross stitch challenge and every month there is a theme and an acrostic and so uh, the, the theme for um, the, the theme for February was love and so I have this pattern here that I am doing again I think I mentioned this before I'm not doing all this sort of work on the top and the bottom uh, one I don't think it's necessary and two I am playing a little bit of um, uh, chicken with the margins um, this pattern is actually based on, this is like, I guess, an old, I shouldn't say antique, probably more vintage print that they had found. Um, I actually do really love this detail up here and wish that's what had been included as opposed to the, the roses they have here, but I'm not talented enough artist. To, well, I'm not a talented artist at all, so there's no way I could rechart anything like that. So I will just be doing the roses down here. So I have met my goal for what I wanted to do for the monthly magazine challenge. I had like part of the, I think I had most of the light green and um, of the T and the H done. Um, so I came over, put an O in, and there's a little bit of a dark green shadowing here. Um, and then I went up and did, this is the word one, the bottom part of it, um, because for magical stitches, we needed to stitch on something um, we needed to use blue thread and stitch on it. So I said I was going to stitch on blue letters and we needed 300 stitches and it was a challenge to get 300 stitches out of this. I think I just barely made it. Um, I think I, I pulled out another color just to put a little bit, a few more stitches in so I could get to my 300. Um, on this down here is a Duran Duran me a minder. I was a teenager in the eighties and I love Duran Duran. Again, this was another pin I had where I just pulled off the, the pin mechanism and put on uh, glued on magnets and made it to a needle minder. Another project that I worked on, um, I've showed this before is my apple sampler originally started for the monthly magazine cross stitch challenge. Here's the, uh, the version they have. I'm, again, I've taken out all these apples with the words above them. And so, Here's where I am now. For magical stitches, I needed something that had a dessert in it. So I did this. I finished off the pie, including finally getting all the back stitching in. Um, there's some straight stitches there to show the vents that you would cut into a pie. Um, and again, I feel like this is the piece. The closer I get to the finish, the further away it feels. 
Um, so there is surprisingly a lot of detail in this, a lot of fractionals, a lot of backstitching, and so it just takes a long time. Um, I do wanna get this piece done this year, and so anytime I can find it to fit a prompt, um, I'm using it, so I have other, lots of other patterns that have dessert because I love to bake. Um, anytime it, anything with like fruit or anything that comes out that I can find an excuse to work on this, I, I do, um, because I really would like to get it done. And again, I feel like there's not that much left, but again, the more I do, the more I feel I have left to do. The piece that I probably spent the most time working on um, the past couple of weeks is uh, The Green Dancer. This is charted by Artisy, artwork by Edgar Degas. Um, so this is where, uh, this is mock-up of, well, this is probably the actual picture of the actual painting um, that they used um, to chart. And so here's where I am now. I have fully finished the second page. There were a lot of confetti stitches um, uh, in these two dancers here, um, as well as in this tutu. But what you can see here is that I have pulled all the stitches through. So this is, um, when, when I had a confetti stitch, I would come down and do it. So this is where the tutu keeps going. Um, this is also um, the leg of the dancer. She's in an arabesque. I've also started then just most of this in here is all just background because Degas was an impressionist painter. Um, there's a lot of, you know, it's not solid color. It's not like it's a solid wall. Um, but I also, it goes really quickly because I sort of figure if I make a counting mistake, it's not a big deal because no one's going to know. Let me just take a look at that. It's all sort of black and gray and maybe a little bit green in there. Um, so I am uh, looking forward to finishing this again. This is, this right here is the edge of the pattern. So I really don't have that much to finish this here. And then there'll be a third done with the pattern. So it's a relatively small for um, the types of full coverages that I like to do. Um, but it's a beautiful stitch. And again, um, it's an impressionist painting. So you don't expect the details to be perfect, um, even in the stitching. Um, but when you hold it back and take a look at it, it looks great. So I'm really enjoying working on that. I also worked on, I only put a little bit into this. Um, this is my largest piece. This is uh, the little cake shop. It's super color, um, or max color. It is not super sized. Um, this is a Heaven Earth design, um, artwork by Amy Stewart. And again, I love to bake. Um, so I thought if I spend a lot of time working on this, um, the problem is it always makes me want to go and bake a cake and I don't need to be eating a lot of cakes right now. Um, so I really, the only reason why I pulled this one out right now is that uh, for the monthly magazine challenge when we did the bringo challenge um, we needed to put in 100 stitches on our largest width so don't be shocked by my progress here literally all i've done is this little block of 100, 100 stitches here um, this is a cake needle minder that i got from uh, mad for minders specifically for this project um, and i'm stitching this this is a 22 count ivory um, hard anger and i'm doing uh, one over one um, for this project um, the reason why i'm showing it to you now even though i didn't there's not much to see, um, is that um, in later in February, they will have for the um, Full Coverage Fanatics, I believe is having a challenge to, uh, a weekend challenge where you try and, try and put in as many stitches in your largest whip. Um, so I am looking forward to doing that. Um, other projects, um, so that's basically transitioning from my whips into my plan. So little cake shop will get um, quite a bit of work, um, hopefully that weekend. Um, Again, it's going to be a lifetime project uh, right now with the way I'm stitching. Um, so, um, but it's it's right now. I'm even though it's the max color, I'm in the background, so there's not a huge variation of color changes. It's not like 100 stitches, 100 confetti stitches. Um, so another project that I'm working on. Um, this is a Mirabilia portrait of Veronica, um, and I started this February last year. So its birthday comes up. Um, this year, or actually, sorry, this month. Um, and so you can see where I am. Um, this is a 32 count linen. The color I think is like star sapphire is actually what it was called for um, because uh, I picked, I tried to select my own color originally and then I realized it wasn't going to work. And so rather than sort of playing the chicken game of keeping ordering fabric, I was not in a, a place where I could go into a, an LNS or any store and find the fabric that I wanted. So I just went for the call for fabric um, so I could go ahead and get started. So you can see where I am now. Obviously I've done her, her whole head except for the beading um, and I've started on her face. Um, and I am doing the skin one over one. That is 
very tedious. I don't regret that decision, but right now I'm in the middle of it, so it's not something that I'm so inclined to pick up. I also decided that I really should need to do uh, the one over one with a magnifier, and I didn't have a good situation for a long time. I now have a good magnifier, um, and so I had for the Bringo Challenge, it was work, put 100 stitches in a whip that you dread, and I put 100 stitches in this, and it was the first time I used the magnifier, and it went so much more quickly. However, as you can guess, 100 stitches one over one is basically 25 stitches regular, so I didn't get very far in the pattern. Um, but it has a birthday coming up, um, so I will uh, later in February be putting more stitches into it, definitely. Also, this week for Magical Stitches, we have to um, put, I think, 400 stitches into a, uh, a project that is a chore. And again, right now doing the skin, it's a chore. I also am concerned about uh, her skin. There's no sort of blending of the colors let's say these are you know there's there is another color that's got to go in here and i get it that part of her face is in the shadow um but and that's the way that it looks on the picture as well um but uh, i may end up picking a little out and sort of with the one over one mixing it up a little bit so that there might be just a little bit more blending so there you don't feel like there's a harsh line um, between where her face is in the shadow um versus uh sort of where it's not. Um, so um, that's where this is. I'm hoping that I will be able to get some good progress on this, certainly with the 400 stitches, which will be 100 stitches, um, 100 on, according to the pattern. Um, I'm hoping to get some progress on her um, because I'm really, uh, you know, looking forward to get to that dress. And, you know, I sort of, I feel strongly that I, you know, I deliberately started at the top uh, because I, I wanted to get through this. It has delayed me from working on it. Um, but I sort of do want to get through it so I can work on this fabulous dress. And again, there's, I guess it's a chair or something that she's leaning against. It's not that much, but just these colors and the, the way this works out. And I think uh, when I purchased this, the, per, uh, the, um, the person who in the store made a comment that there's over like 1,200 beads in it. So this is going to be a while before I finish it. I don't mind beading. I like beading. I'm fine with it. Um, but it's just a project that will take me quite a while to finish. And I do have a whole pile of mirabilias and other fancy ladies that I would like to get to. Um, so got to get through her before I really want to uh, work on the next one. My last whip go um, number that was called was for a thousand stitches on uh, this really well, vintage pattern as I like to call it. It's the tea table. It's I think a, a, a serendipity um, design. So obviously this is one I have had in my stash for 20 plus years and it's I love tea. Um, and so I'm looking forward to, um, to getting some stitches in on this. I, it was a mania start last year, I, um, but I didn't get very far. In fact, this is all I've gotten in, which is at the very top center. Um, part of the challenge that I have with this pattern is because it's one of these old booklets. You open it, and I don't want to open it up all the way because there's a pattern, but you can see it opens like that. Um, and so it just really is a challenge to uh, sort of have a comfortable way of working on it because just trying, you know, working at the top. Let me see if I can. Yeah, so I'll try and show you on the back a little bit. This is the top and so on the pattern. And so it just, it's hard to try and get it where I can look at it and stitch and I don't mind stitching from a paper pattern. I'm totally fine with that, but just trying to get that in a comfortable way. It's stiff. Um, I did try and make copies of it, um, but I haven't had access to a copier in a while because of the pandemic. And so, um, and, and because I, I was able to retire early. So it, it was one, one that I've reached for, but I deliberately put it in my WIPCO board because I wanted to make some real progress on this. Um, I'm also going to use it for magical stitches. It's, we have to, um, uh, put, put stitches into a whip that is something that we would sacrifice. I don't drink coffee um, and I have for the time being given up soda already um, you know to be healthier. Um, so tea is my only caffeine source and so it's what I have every morning with breakfast um, just to help me get going a little bit more in the morning and so if I had to give that up it would be a real sacrifice. Fortunately the sacrifice is only in magical stitches and not in real life um, but nonetheless that's what I would do. And then I also have a question for you, um, people who might know more about flowers and how they're designed in grass stitch. Um, for no new starts, we are um, 
you know, you start, I'll just take some of the yellow flowers over here. Uh, there is a challenge starting for, uh, in, towards the end of February for the next um, star sign. And the, and the flower for March, it's a daffodil. Do any of these yellow flowers look like daffodils to you? I can't really tell. Um, I would love your feedback um, because if it is, then it would be great to tie this project in, um, make, combine WIPCO and that challenge. Um, and the, if I did that, so I'm sort of up here in this white and green here, I would then come down and we don't have to stitch on the actual item, but it would be sort of just get me down a little bit further to get down towards the daffodil um, and maybe even get a little stitching in on that. Um, so uh, that is uh, another one of my plans that I plan to work on in February. Um, the last one that I believe that I showed last time I did my video was uh, Mrs. Gone Batty um, by Brenda Gervais. I think many people know this pattern. I showed it last time, but I'll show it again. Here's where I am now. You can see I've got the um, part of the cat done, one of the bats. Um, so this pattern is a lot of fun to stitch. This is two over two um, on 28 count linen. So it's a relatively easy stitch for me. Um, this is, I'm in a, a very small group called Letters of the Month. And so you either have to take a letter from the beginning of one of your pattern names. So this one is Gone Batty. So you choose G or B. Um, or a major, a major uh, feature in the pattern. So I picked cat. Um, so basically, we know there are 26 letters in the, um, the, Roman, uh, the Roman alphabet, but we uh, only have 12 months. And so they basically said you can take two letters and you, you pick the letters and you don't do those letters, um, but you have to then start at A and end up with Z and then whatever two letters you choose not to do. So this month for me is C and D. I'm using Green Dancer, the D. Um, that's part of the reason why I also stitch a lot on that. And also, um, so this one, C for cat. Um, so my goal for each of those is 500 stitches. I've already accomplished that on Green Dancer. And again, this isn't, uh, this one won't be too hard. Um, I just need to find uh, some good time to stitch on it, um, meeting all my other challenges. And speaking of cats, here's Kyle. Come here, Kyle, show me your face. So this is Kayo. She's my tabby. She is um, getting close to five years old now. Um, we adopted her when we lived in Belize. Um, so she is um, coming out right now, coming out of her own. Um, she doesn't like winter. I live in northern Florida, so while we don't get the cold um, the way we do, a lot of people do in the United States, um, it's still it's not warm here particularly much um, for December, January. February is starting to get warmer now, um, but um, she's very happy inside. Um, we do we have a do screen, have a screen and porch that she does go out on, but during the colder weather, she decides to stay inside. We have another cat that doesn't care what the temperature is. She's out on that porch from sun up to sundown. So um, she probably won't feature much in my videos unless it's really pouring rain and she doesn't want to be outside. So now I'm going to move on to haul. Um, so I the first I, I got enabled by quite a few people in Philosophy. Um, so the first thing I did was I, um, I was watching McKenna from the 1884 Stitchery. Um, so I'm stitching in sequins and she is, uh, she has a store, the 1884 Stitchery. And she, she has a lot of Owl Forest um, kits and threads and patterns. She has them shipped to her in the United States and then you can buy from her rather than going to the Owl Forest site. I've heard very good things about the shipping from Owl Forest uh, embroidery directly. I'm just not that patient, so I would rather have it sourced from the United States and get it. So um, she she had um, discounted all of her items that she had in her store from Al Forest Embroidery. So I took the opportunity to buy another kit. Um, this is one that is called um, Forest of Miracles, and it's it's got quite a bit of Russian on here. I was a Russian major in college, and so while if this is referring to a particular um, Russian fairy tale, I'm not aware of it. Um, but just the way that like the letters, certainly the, the, the capital letters here and the way that just the words are all written, it does remind me of um, sort of what you would see in uh, storybooks uh, for that are made for children, um, but beautiful illustrations and just the way that this is re really reminded me of that. And this is talking about, you know, that the forest has great things and anyone who knows and loves the forest, um, the forest will help them. And 
um, Russian uh, Russian society has a um, I'm trying to think of the right word. Um, Russians, most ones that I have met, really enjoy. I mean, even if they live in Moscow or another large city, um, in the summertime it's relatively short, and they really do enjoy going out and enjoying. Uh, the time in the forest. Um, many of them have dachas, which are like summer homes. They're, most of them are sort of small cabins. Um, you know, they're not well heated. There might be a fireplace, but they're not places that you're meant to live in uh, year round. Um, but they are places that they would have summer homes um, and they would have a plot of land. It, particularly important if you lived in a big city and you didn't have access to that. And people, they would grow their own, you know, vegetables and then they would can them and that would help that you know to have uh, during the winter um, but then also I think they just really enjoy going out and walking um, you know enjoying nature and the forest uh, a lot of uh, mushroom hunting they like to do as well um, not that's had anything to do with mushrooms um, so this pattern just really spoke to me for that um, while I was also there I had um, um, 1884 Citri also um, she buys a lot of uh, charts and materials from either cross stitch stores that have, uh, that have um, are closing out or that are um, cross stitch stores that are closing out or for some reason um, people who are en masse getting rid of their cross stitch supplies either because the person has passed away or they realize they're not going to continue with it so i bought a, a bunch of dmc and what mckenna does is she um, puts i think she selects 50 skeins so you're not going in and selecting the colors that you need you're just going in and selecting um you're just going in and selecting uh, i want this and then you get a much discounted price as a result so this originally had 50 skeins in it um, I have several projects full coverage that were not fully kitted, so I pulled out the skeins that I needed to complete or to further kit those along. This is what I have left, um, but I'm sure I will put these to good use, so I'm not worried about that. Um, so again, it was a great deal. Um, the next thing that I purchased on this, uh, I was enabled by um, Annie, the joy-filled stitcher. Um, she she's, uh, announced that Sulky was having a sale, um, so I went running over to the Sulky site. Um, I think like many of you, I... Um, you know, I've watched this sort of trend of people using the 12 weight sulky on cross stitch as I have tried to explore different threads and different fabrics um, from the way I used to stitch. I've really wanted to do a monochromatic piece um, with sulky. Um, but uh, my, my Joann's doesn't have the 12 weight and it, to go and just buy a little bit from sulky, it just didn't seem cost effective. So I didn't do it and, and so I sort of haven't purchased it. But when they had the sale on sulky, um, they had uh, so the first thing I did was I bought two bags of these. These are sort of like grab bags, so it's a combination of um, solids and uh, variegated threads. So you can see, and they don't perfectly match up. I, one of these fell out, um, and so I bought uh, two bags of these. Um, each bag I think was about eleven dollars, so I thought it was a good price, even if I'm not necessarily, I you know I don't know how I'm going to use all of these. It was good to have it in selection and see if I could try it. Um, I also have, for the longest time, wanted to start a long dog sampler. Um, I have Pandemic, like many of you. I love it, but it's not necessarily my favorite long dog sampler design. So I am looking at um, other designs because I'm doing no new starts. I am, I have time, but I will um, eventually settle on one long dog sampler, long dog sampler, and I will um, buy it and start it in 2022. Um, so this is the this is a cone, I guess, of um, Nassau blue. This is one of my favorite colors. I always knew that you know if I did a long dog and I did it monochromatic, it would probably be in a blue. So I um, this also was deeply discounted. Um, so I bought this. This is a lot more than I will ever need for even one of their larger monochromatic pieces. Um, but again, the price was right. I have it, um, and if I don't use it all on monochromatic, I can use it on something else. The last thing that I, I purchased was from um, so the uh, book club, um, what's the official name, I should know this, uh, Sapphire Mountain, uh, Sapphire Mountain Handcrafts uh, Stitching Book Club. Um, I have uh, been following her for almost two years now on Flosstube and on Instagram. Um, 
she's a lovely person and she started this her first pattern was um, she did her purpose she has lots of patterns that have nothing to do with books um, but her first pattern for the stitching book club was um, Pride and Prejudice Jane Austen um, I participated in that uh, it was a mystery stitch along I participated in that and um, I participated in the secret garden last year I loved all of her designs that she did for all the books. I chose not to participate in them because I wanted to put my energies elsewhere. Um, but she had the first one for 2021 is Sense and Sensibility, and I really wanted to participate in it. Um, and she actually has gone above and beyond and has started making kits. Now, there are probably not enough kits for everyone who has purchased the pattern, or, um, but nonetheless, um, she's made hundreds of these kits and have put them in her Etsy shop. Um, I believe the last thing I saw, she said that she had 750 people who are participating in the, uh, in, uh, or at least have purchased Sense and Sensibility, um, the pattern. Um, and I think the first one drops pretty, the first part of the, the pattern drops pretty soon. And I know a lot of you are saying, but you're doing No New Starts. Well, the, the Facebook group No New Starts 2021 does have one little loophole. They call it the freebie. And basically it means that you can um have one pattern that you start i know a lot of people are choosing to do that for their birthday start um, but for me i knew coming up front that um stitching book club even before she announced the titles this was going to be my freebie i was going to pick one of the four books and do uh, and do that um so i chose of the when i saw the first three books um this was the one that appealed to me most so i um, bought this one um, the fourth book is The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. I will definitely be there as soon as it, it drops online. I'll be there to purchase it. Um, but assuming I have held firm on no new starts for 2021, it will probably drop in like November or December. I will buy the pattern um, immediately because um, she, she, has a, she has a limited period that she can sell them. But I will, um, I will wait and hold off stitching it until... The end of uh, No New Stars 2021, which is actually about mid-December. I think they've decided that for Christmas, for the holidays, whatever your holiday is, starting about, I don't remember the exact date, but there is a date that they will say, okay, you can, for these last two weeks, we're officially over um, for No New Stars 2021. So I'm really looking forward um, to doing that. Okay, so that is all for the stitching content. Um, I just have a few books that I'd like to talk about. So if you're only here for stitching, thank you for stopping by and I hope to see you next time. For those of you sticking around, um, I've read a, a few books over the past uh, couple of weeks. So the first one I read is um, Marguerite's Harbor by uh, Eleanor Morse. Um, this is a story, um, sort of a gentle story, slow moving story, so to speak, um, that, you know, there's not a lot of action in it, not a lot of suspense. Um, it's a you know, sort of family drama. There is a, a grandmother uh, who is, you know, starting in the first, she lives alone um, in the first stages of dementia. Um, so uh, one, of, one of her children, um, and this I believe is in the 60s, so one of her children um, agrees to move in with her, um, with her family. Um, so it's, so now it's a three generational household, the grandmother, uh, her daughter and her husband and their two kids, um, or actually three kids. And so, and the dog and there's a cat and whatever. And it's just sort of watching their life over the course of 10 to 15 years, watching the kids grow, uh, the standard, you know, marital issues, um, the struggles they have with sort of recognizing there's what you do for a paycheck and there's what you want to do and the, the difference between those. Um, so that's why I say it's a gentle book. I mean, there are some stark things that happen in this, um, but it's sort of a slow pace. And while it's all in third person, it will jump back and forth between the different characters and give you a little bit of their, you know, a little bit of their viewpoint and their story as it goes along. Um, I enjoyed reading it. Was it the best book I've ever read? No, um, but it was enjoyable and I got it for free. I got this, I won this from uh, Goodreads. So um, this, as you can see, it says advanced uh, reader copy. Um, I believe that the, um, it's supposed to come out. If it hasn't already been published, it's coming out soon. The next book that I read um, is called The Woman Next Door, and I'm not going to say her name right, uh, Iwande Omotoso. Um, so this is a book that takes place in South Africa. It's about a, a woman who, um, or two women actually, um, both, I, I'm imagining them in their 80s, they might be a little bit younger, um, but it's in South Africa, 
and uh, one is black and one is white um, and it takes but it is the black woman is not originally from South Africa so she was able to move into this enclave with her husband um, that normally would be reserved for whites because she was not uh, from South Africa um, the character that character like the author um, was originally from Barbados uh, but like in this particular case is that um, she moved to the UK um, and then uh, lived for a while in Nigeria with her husband and then they moved to South Africa and so basically um, this is both of these uh, women are now elderly and they're you know um, one one husband has already passed away and he's basically spent all the family money so now his uh, you know his his wife who had a promising career but uh, she was an architect but she had children and she stopped working and all of a sudden now she's having to figure out what is she going to do as well as the other woman whose husband is dying um, she worked her entire life so she actually most of the money that they have is hers um, but she finds out that her um, husband had a has a, a daughter who is now an adult um, that uh, the wife never knew about um, and so it's just sort of these two women who spent their whole lives fighting with each other realize that they have to sort of rely on each other to accomplish what they want to. Um, again, it was a fairly easy read. Um, you know, the, the publicists talk about that it's like grumpy old men, but for women, not really, not that funny. Um, there were some humorous moments in it and some touching moments in it. Again, I enjoyed this. This book was given to me as a gift. Um, I am part of a group that... Uh, uh, it's basically the organization I used to work for. People live all over the world, and so the idea is to give a book um, that sort of wherever you're living right now is um, sort of ref reflective on that. Um, and it's for people who both are currently working as well as who have uh, left, the, left the organization. Um, so the woman who sent this to me is, uh, she lives in South Africa. Um, she is an American citizen, um, but she lives in South Africa. And we also said, given the hard year we've had, can we please keep it a little bit on the lighter side? Um, so again, it was, it, you know, it's always interesting to read about sort of a country. This is sort of, I can't remember the exact time frame, but it's not at the height of apart apartheid. It's after that. Um, I don't remember the exact year. This was published in 2016, but it's them coming out of, um, you know, there's sort of the land commission and people who had their people who had their land basically stolen from them. They might have received a pittance uh, for the value of their land, but they basically were kicked off their land. There's a little bit of people who are now through the land commission trying to reclaim what was stolen from them. So there are some, um, um, some things like that that are a reflection of a country that is coming out of apartheid and its horrible history. Um, but that's not really what this book focuses on. It's much more, you know, you could take these two women and place them anywhere in the world two older women who are neighbors who don't get along, who all of a sudden realize um, they have a lot more in common than they think. Um, so that's really what this is about. Um, so again, I enjoyed this. Um, so if you're looking for a book that's a little bit on the light side, um, but touches on a few things, uh, this does it. Um, the last book that I read, which I, uh, I checked it out from my library um, on, as an ebook, so I don't have a hard copy. I read Party of Two by Jasmine, um, I believe Guillory is how she says her last name. She has a whole series of books. Um, she is a, uh, a black woman and she has a lot of sort of romantic books, a lot, you know, romance books, let's put it that way, you know, where strong woman meets a guy and, uh, you know, sort of like a Hallmark movie. Are they, aren't they? But of course they are and end up together. Um, it's that kind, you know, but there has to be some big drama, whether they break up or misunderstanding or something along those lines, but standard for romance novels around the world. Um, they have that. Um, in this particular case, um, this is a woman who is, uh, she had been a New York attorney and she decided with a good friend of hers from law school to open up her own law firm. So she moved from New York to Los Angeles and she, one night while well, she's, uh, like right when she's setting up the law firm, so she hasn't, be, in the, hasn't even been able to move into her house. She, um, she uh, meets a guy in a bar doesn't recognize him but she's like it's LA so it could be some bit actor and then of course like they just have a conversation and they say good night and then she turns on the TV and realizes that he's the junior senator from California um, and he's a white man and so again it's a lot like your typical romance about the excitement of a relationship and the uniqueness of it and all of that um, but again there are 
some um, racial issues that come up about the perceptions of, um, you know, how a black woman, especially um, successful black woman, um, is perceived, and did she earn where she is, or did she get it because of quotas? All of that that kind of issue comes out, as well as the senator, he's a California senator, so he's uh, his character is quite liberal, um, but that sort of you know white male liberal. Um, I'm a do-gooder, I know what's good for everyone, and the realization that is not the case. Um, so there's uh, the, all of that mixed in. And so um, it's a fun read. Again, uh, not anything heavy. Again, a few serious issues thrown in there, um, but for the most part, it's your standard romance novel. Um, but I enjoyed it. So there's the three books I have finished. I am currently in the middle of two more, so uh, next time I will talk about them. So. Thank you everyone if you made it to this point for watching my video. I look forward to uh, sharing my stitching and reading with you in the next, uh, within, in about two weeks. Thank you and, and um, have a good, sorry, I don't know how to end these things. Thank you for watching and have a good couple of weeks. Bye.